Let's look at an example of PI or proportional integral control. This is a simple example using the plant 10 over S plus 3 and I have the specifications for desired performance of a Z is equal to 0.7, a settling time is, e is less than one second, and no steady state error to step input. We can see right off that the system is type 0, that it has no integrator in it, which means that in order to have zero steady state error to a step, I'm going to have to add an integrator to make it type 1, since I know that I will have to have at least an integrator portion. Integrator tends to slow the system down, so I'll have to add something to make it faster and achieve my settling time of less than one second. Let's begin by looking at the open loop plant. So here are the poles on the complex axis. We have a pole at minus 3. The desired specifications are for a settling time of less than 1 second. That is 4 over a equals 1. So a needs to be here. That means that my poles will have to be on the left side of minus 4 in order to satisfy the settling time specification. I also have a z is equal to 0.7. That's on the 45. So this area in here will be the required area for my poles in order to satisfy the specs. It's obvious that my system as is does not satisfy those specifications. It doesn't match the zero steady state error criteria and the existing pole is too slow. For my controller, I'm going to use proportional integral. The closed loop system is shown here. I'm choosing proportional integral because that's how the problem is set up. The normal way to attack this is you take the plant, you figure out what the requirements are, and either add proportional integral or derivative control in a piece at a time until you satisfy the specifications. The proportional integral control can be written another way. We could write this as s kp plus ki over s, or we could factor out the kp and write it in the form shown here. The advantage to this form is that it's convenient for use in MATLAB. The system now has a gain, an integrator, and a zero at ki over kp. And for convenience, I'm just going to call this kip. So I'm designing to kp and kip, and then I'll back out the actual value for ki when I'm all done with the design. You could design it in this form. You could design in this form. I'm just choosing this form because it's convenient and it makes it easy in MATLAB. It's also going to, we'll also find that this is a convenient form when we do frequency domain design because we're adding a zero and a pole and a gain. The next step is to find the values of KP and KIP. This problem is simple enough that you could solve this problem directly just by picking a desired closed loop characteristic equation and matching coefficients. I'm going to solve it using an iterative approach and root locus. My first step in root locus is to write the closed loop characteristic equation. So doing the math here, I have this closed loop characteristic equation. Now I'm going to vary kp or kip so the equation can be rewritten in one of these two forms. If I want to vary kp, then I can rearrange the equation to look like this. This becomes my d polynomial. This is my n polynomial. If I want to vary kip, I use this form. This becomes my d polynomial. This becomes my n polynomial. Again, remember we're calling these d and n because that would correspond to the numerator and denominator of a equivalent system if you put it in a unity feedback form and did a traditional root locus method on it. If I were to set kip equal to zero and just vary kp, I would have this root locus. From this system, I have a pole at zero and a pole at minus three shown here. I have a zero at, well, this is zero, at zero at zero. And then I need one more zero because the order of the numerator is lower than the order of the denominator. That turns out to be here at minus infinity. I have a pole and a zero right on top of each other. These cancel each other out, start to the pole goes to the zero, and this pole goes over to this zero. So this is a very simple root locus. This is what happens with kip equal to zero, varying only kp, I'm speeding up the system. If I hold kp constant set equal to zero and vary kip, I end up with this. The system has a pole at three and a pole at zero, zero and three, and no zeros. It means I must have two zeros at infinity. So the root locus shows the system coming together and breaking off and going like that. I'm interested in varying both of these, of course, in order to get within my specifications. So you can see one plan of attack here is to move 
the KP until this pole moves out here far enough. Hold that and then come back and vary KIP, which will cause the two poles to come together and split. So if I can move this one out far enough, say like at minus eight, they'll split at minus four and then just pick a KIP large enough so that my gain brings it up to a damping ratio of 0.7. So here's the plan again. First, I'm going to vary KP. In the case of KP, I have a pole at minus 3 and a pole 0 combination, which cancel each other out with KIP is equal to 0. I'm going to vary KP until I come out here to minus 8. So that's varying that value. Next, I'm going to hold KP equal to whatever value gives me a pull here. And then I'm going to go into this second equation, just the same equation, just rearranged, and vary KIP. If we look at this equation, we now have poles here. Well, that's a pole at zero and a pole at the location corresponding to where I picked for KP. So in the second case, I'm going to have a pole at zero and a pole where I picked KP from the first equation. And now I vary KIP they will come together for break apart. So pick KP and then pick up here KIP. And now it's just a matter of doing the iteration in order to find the corresponding values, but this is pretty straightforward. Vary the first equation with KIP is equal to zero until you get the right value for KP, and then vary KIP until I have complex poles that lie on the 45, so they satisfy the 0.7 damping ratio. So you can see from this equation here with KIP equal to zero that in order to have the pole at minus eight, I need to have KP is equal to five. The next is to pick the value for KIP in this equation. I'm going to write it out with KP is equal to five. Here it is. Just factor the S out. This is my pole at zero and this is my pole at minus eight. Now I just need to pick a KIP so that I have the complex poles that land on the 45 and give me the 0.7 damping ratio. It's a little bit of trial and error with KP equals to five to find the value of KIP. And I can find KIP is equal to about 6.5. You can verify that if you just look at the roots. Crank out the numbers, you'll find that the roots of the closed loop characteristic equation are minus 4 plus and minus 4i for kp is equal to 5 and kip is equal to 6.5. Then all you have to do is back out the value for ki. Solve then for kip. Given the definition kip is K ki over p, you can look up above and see where we did that. And the value for ki is 32.5. The value for kp is 5. And that's my proportional integral control solution. There's another way you can look at the root locus. Instead of dividing into two pieces, you can look at it as one piece. We have a system with a pole at zero and a pole at minus three. That comes from the D polynomial. We also have a system with a gain and a zero at KIP. So somewhere out here associated with this is going to be a zero. Now I want to do the root locus on KP. Remember, this value could change, so I can move the zero wherever I want. If the system looks like this, I have a zero to infinity, so I expect the roots to come together, break apart, and the root locus would look something like that. Now my control design is sort of a one-step process. I move this zero around, that changes the size of the circle. As I move the zero out further, the circle gets larger. And then I vary KP to move myself around this root locus path. It's not quite as straightforward as the method we had before, but it's a little more visual and this works a little bit better with MATLAB. I'm gonna pop up a MATLAB diagram here. In MATLAB, I went to the SISO tools. I put in the plant, which was one over S plus three, and then I added a compensator, which consisted of an integrator, a gain, and a zero. So I have a zero at Z, a gain KP, and an integrator. And I did that right in the compensator design section. And then you can go on the graph for the design tools, and you can drag the zero location and drag the gain location and you can see how the root locus is formed and then just keep adjusting the location of the zeros until the circle crosses the point where you want. I have it set right here at the intersection of my desired settling time and my desired damping ratio and then adjust the gain. Then you can go back into MATLAB and ask you to give the values for those. Results will be the same as we did the previous method. It's just a little bit easier to do it this way in MATLAB than the two-step iterative method that I did earlier on.